It's Saturday afternoon college hoops as Western Oregon visits Boise State. Welcome inside Extra Mile Arena with KTVB Sports Director Jay Test and former Bronco standout Nick Duncan. I'm Mark Snyder. Well, after a gauntlet of an early season schedule that saw Boise State opponents average net rating to be fourth strongest in the country, a bit of a respite today, perhaps, against the Division II Wolves. Mark, it's not only a matter of who the Broncos have played, but where they have played. They spent nearly two weeks out on the East Coast in November. They come back home, and they have to play the defending NIT champs. These guys are going to be battle-tested by the time Mountain West play rolls around. Well, Boise State's coming off that tough game that, that Jay talked about, a 69-64 win against North Texas. They ended the game on an 11-0 run. Gave us some previews from last year, ending the season with some defense on 11-0 run in the final 1 minute 49 seconds with Arbo leading the way with a career high in points. It was a close defensive battle, really a physical, aggressive team at North Texas. Boise State, though, the big guy, you mentioned him, Chibuzo Abo, a career-high 27 points. He was fun to watch. He was arguably their best defender in the game. He was their best offensive presence in the game. But what really stood out to me was his efficiency on offense. Leon Rice is in his 13th season, right? No player has scored more points than Chibuzo did, 27 on 11 or fewer shots in a single game. That was his most efficient effort of his college career. Abo, when he scores 15 points, they're 12 and 4. And obviously last year he has the recipe of going off with 20 points in nine games as well. So hopefully he can replicate that again tonight here in X Mile Arena. He played 38 of 40 minutes, probably won't have to do that today. But you don't want to take the Division II Wolves lightly. Remember, Chaminade did beat Virginia <laughs> way back when. Boise State and Western Oregon, the Wolves and the Broncos doing action next year live from Extra Mile Arena. The tip-off is coming up next on the Mountain West Network on KTVB. <laughs> Boise State looking to defend its 17-game home winning streak here at Extra Mile Arena, the sixth longest win streak currently on the home floor in NC2A currently. In order to have a great season, you've got to protect home court. And although they've done it over this stretch, they've done it consistently back since 2019-20 season. They're 54-7 and seven on home court here at Extra Mile Arena. Ball's in the air. We'll get the starters for you in a second. This is Boise State in white. Jace Whiting running the point. Omar Stanley, Tyson Degenhart, Max Rice, and Shibuzo Abo on the floor for Coach Leon Rice. We'll get the Western starters for you momentarily. Knocked free in a turnover, and we've seen a lot of that early season. Boise State wants to cut down on the TOs. Here's the starting lineup. Keont Myers, Chris Cook, Jason Gallant, Carson Frinke, and Peter Casey. Well, actually, it's Cameron Benzel is the other starter. The 6'7 senior. This is Myers. He's their leading scorer. Deep three for Frankie is off the mark, and Omar Stanley runs it down. Abo can't connect, but gets the bounce. Rebound there for Frankie. There's the starters, as we referenced. See Jace Whiting back in the starting lineup. Leon Rice going back to his sophomore point guard, try to get the guys going at that position. Talked with David Motes, uh, an assistant coach, a little earlier this week. He said he wanted Jace to come out and just kind of be a dog, right? Like, come out, be aggressive, be confident. I know he missed that early shot, but he took the early shot, showing that confidence. Degenhardt inside for two. He had 19 in the win against North Texas. And he gets the Broncos on the board. Chris Cook, out of Los Angeles. Swing it, that's Gallant. His step back is good. Nice shot by Jason Gallant from Simi Valley, California, and St. Francis High School. We'll see that a lot from the Wolves today. Full guard set usually with the center in, moving the ball, 6.5 threes per game. 
They'll be looking to move the ball in the Broncos to get their shots up. Omar Stanley, the transfer from St. John's. Nice cut to Degenhardt for the two. Good Degen look by Omar Stanley. Degenhardt starting the game as he left off in the second half last game, really bringing the Broncos back and you can see him there. Always bringing the energy, trying to hype this crowd up. How about Tyson showing off the bunnies there too? We don't see that too often. Not too of often. Him. Very impressive. Myers has it stripped away. Nice defense by Degenhart. Stanley into the fourth court. Whiting in the corner from Burley. Two Idaho natives on the starting five for the Broncos. Degenhart spins and is fouled, and he'll get the ball on the side. Nice move, but Tyson looks to be aggressive this afternoon. Speaking of him over the offseason, he's really developed his mid-post game, and I think for the Broncos, they'll really look to attack. A lot of offensive times coming down the court, he'll look to get in the mid-post area and go to work with his great footwork. Now the Broncos have a size advantage over Western Oregon as Whiting cans the three off the pass for Max Rice. Jace Whiting, although he hasn't shot the ball a lot this year, he's been really efficient, shooting above 50% from the field, as well as the three-point line. It's great to see him come out here aggressive to start the first half. Myers cut off by Stanley. Good defense by Whiting, forcing the reset. Out to Myers. Shot clock at nine. Frinky with the deep three. Frinky averages almost eight points a game. This is his sixth start of the season, or his career rather, and now we have a whistle away from the ball. Cook with the foul, but I think that's where Boise State using their size advantage, posting up, drew the foul. See here, pin down action. It's really what the Broncos are looking to aim at, getting some Max Rice coming off those screens, looking for the three as well as attacking. Degenhart, head fake, puts it in, and he is going to go to the line. He is just so nifty once he gets that ball in the paint. Seems like there may be a player in front of him, but he's really great with his footwork, as we can see here, up faking. He always has a tendency to get that defensive player up in the air, going to the line for the M1. Yeah, he's such an experienced guy. Doesn't rush that at all, gathers himself, goes up strong, finishes, and now he's going to get a chance at a three-point play. His insertion in the starting lineup as a freshman, about seven games in, really turned around the fortunes of this Boise State team, and he has been the leader ever since. Yeah, I think with Tyson Dagenhart on the floor as a member of the Boise State basketball team, the Broncos have won something like 74% uh, of their games. I mean, he is just a winner. Whiting with the foul on the dribble, and now we will see Roddy Anderson, the transfer from... San Diego come in, the sixth, the freshman. Correction, the sophomore. Deep three is off the mark, and Abba with the rebound, scattered floor. And maintains possession, then loses it out of bounds as he slipped on the floor. Boise State off to the early lead, 10-5 over Western Oregon as we return to Extra Mile Arena after this. Boise State up five in the early going. Gentlemen, the keys to this afternoon's contest. Well, Boise State, last game, 20 turnovers, 12 in the first half. Talking to Boise State coaches, they'll be looking at just making simple plays, two feet, two hands, making sure they're getting that ball from side to side and creating less turnovers. I think this is a game, too, where Boise State needs to get their offense back on track. You look at their record, you look at the opponents they've played, you're probably pleased with the results. But I think anybody that watches the Broncos play know that they're an imperfect team at this point in time. They got to get more production out of their point guards, and they got to get Max Rice going from beyond the perimeter, only shooting 19.4% so far. Degenhart spins that one out, and Stanley over the back with the foul. He saw the steal by Max Rice, but they couldn't convert, and now we will... See Cam Martin, the transfer from Kansas, check in for Omar Stanley. Martin has an NC2A championship ring with the Jayhawks. He didn't play that season, but he's a big part of that team. Looking to bring that winning tradition 
to Boise. Another guy that kind of tinkered with putting him in the starting lineup, bringing him off the bench today. He comes off the bench. He's another guy that I really expect to take off as the season goes along. Dagan Hart off the pass from Anderson on the break. Defense turns to offense. Broncos up 12-5. I'm going to have to check with my guy, Nate Lowry, the sports information director here at Boise State. I wonder if Tyson Dagenhardt has ever had two dunks in a game in, in, ever in his Let career. Let alone one. Right, exactly. <laughs> in the first five minutes. Yeah. Gallant with the answer for the Wolves of Western Oregon. Their last game, they fell to Northwest Nazarene out of Nampa in Monmouth. They will return to the Treasure Valley end of February to take on NNU. That one off the mark for Degan Hart. He's now four of six from the field. Martin, high but can't stop the shot by Benzel out of Yonkala, Oregon, and Umpqua Community College. Beautiful pass there by Myers, and going back to that graphic, Wolves really going to keep pace on their offense, not try to get too sped up by the Bronco defense and continue to move that basketball and see if they can create open shots. Western averages almost 75 and a half points a game as Anderson launches the three. It skips off the iron, and the rebound picked up by Myers. So they can score, there's no question. This is one of those games that comes up on the schedule and you're like, how does that happen, right? right? Well, Western Oregon, they were willing and able to play. Boise State needed somebody on their schedule. But I think another thing that Boise State liked about scheduling Western Oregon is that the Wolves said, hey, we're not gonna do anything funky. We're gonna come out, we're gonna run our sets. This is gonna look like real basketball. And that means that Boise State will actually get a chance to work on the things that they need to improve on, whether it be on the offensive end or the defensive end. And Western Oregon, they are capable enough on offense where you need to guard them or they will make you pay. Adding to that full, full play is averaging double digits. Key guy, Keontae Myers with seven assists as well. So we'll see some offense here today at X Mile Arena. Makai McIntyre from Houston now in the game for the Wolves, wearing number zero. But you see the play again, the foul on the baseline on Degenhart as he tried to stop Peter Casey Guananji making the move. He's out of Sacramento. And 20 on the shot clock as the pass comes into Keont Myers. Drives on Anderson, rises and curls it over the front rim. And there's, he's a D1 talent. That's all the coaches and the scouting reports say he can play at the higher level and he showed there. 17.1 points per game and more especially seven assists. As you see Max Rice in transition, getting a hot start as he needs. So let me ask you, Nick, you, you were a, a, an outside shooter. When that first one goes down, how's that change the mindset? Especially after a slow start to the season as we see a Gallant. tough bucket here from Gallant. But, you know, obviously starting the season under 20% from the three-point line. It's always great to see that first one. And I think Max will be targeting this game to try to get the season off to a stronger start and get comfortable here in game nine. Stanley dishes to Martin for the two. And don't look now, but it was a two-point game. And... Now it's a four-point lead for the Broncos, but Western Oregon hanging tough. We know that Stanley's a really talented player. His athleticism gets most of the attention. But that's two really nice interior passes that have led to easy layups for the Broncos today. Quick hands by Martin, but Myers recovers. Guns the pass over to McIntyre. He steps back. That three is long, and Stanley with the board. Snaps a string of four straight made field goals for Western Oregon. Underneath, Max Rice doesn't go, but we have a foul on the rebound. Also in the game for Boise State, Andrew Meadow from Santa Clarita. Let's check it out again. There's the steal, Degan Hart, and the finish. Broncos up, 17-13. Tyson Degan Hart off to a fast start today, four of six, nine points, doing it inside and outside. Doing a great job on the fast break as well, but as we mentioned before, he's done a great job in the offseason, really working on his game from the post, 
using his footwork to his advantage. He might not be the most athletic, although he's got two dunks today, but he's able to score in the point in the post at, at will. We do have confirmation, by the way. This is the first time in his career he has ever had two dunks in one single game. He can fly when he wants. Should play more afternoon games. <laughs> Broncos with the inbound. This is Meadows. To Rice. Rice now with the ball up top, 13 on the shot clock. Meadow with a runner, doesn't get it to drop, but he will go to the free throw line. Aggressive move by the 6'7 freshman. We've mentioned Coach Rice going to the bench, playing over 10 players, all but one games this year. But interesting lineup right now. Martin, Omar Stanley, and Andrew Meadow on the court going with maybe a more height, focused lineup and we spoke to the coaches earlier this week and they'll be looking to exploit the Wolves defense with some height and see if they can get some of these bigs playing together on the court at the same time. Yeah, a couple of things they wanted to do better. Rebound, so that would suggest why Martin and Stanley are in the game together. They also have to protect the rim better on the defensive end. Stanley with the takeaway. Gives it to Meadow. Anderson at the top. Martin, down low for Stanley. Omar, spin scores. Beautiful basketball there from the turnover. As we mentioned, getting that ball inside. Big focal point for the Broncos today, trying to get these bigs involved, get some confidence inside. Broncos back up by six. Ball poked free by Anderson, but recovered there by Gallant. Gallant, step back over Rice. That's short. Max with the rebound. Little bump on his way to the forecourt. Martin thought about the three. I don't think you want him shooting that, but his spin move and he scores. Showing something people didn't know he had. Cam Martin with his first bucket. The story on this guy is he was a standout at the Division II level, over 2,000 career points, transfers to Kansas, battles some injuries after a red shirt season. I'm eager to see what he can do as he gets more and more minutes under his belt. Deep three for Gallant. He's got nine. His season best is 21 against Cal State San Bernardino. But he makes it a five-point game. Boise State on top. Rice looks down low for Martin. Guns it over to Stanley. Omar back down to the low post. Pass to the cutter. Stanley, good ball movement by the Broncos. And Stanley earns the free throws. Stanley producing some great minutes off the bench as well as starting this year. His main issue this year has been 26 fouls in the first eight games, four fouls in 13 minutes last game. Spoke to the coaches this week, and they've done a great job of verticality, two hands up, trying not to reach. And you know, for the Broncos to be great this season, you know, Omar's got to be on the court for 20, 25 minutes and not have any foul issues, playing aggressive all minutes that he's on the court. I think it's four straight games where he's had at least four fouls. He fouled out once in, in those games as well. But it was interesting to hear in practice this week, they called it super tight with Omar. Uh, we were told he picked up 10 fouls at one practice because Boise State's trying to get their point across. Quit playing with your hands, use your body. Max Rice off the offensive rebound by Cam Martin after the two missed free throws, and Rice has hit two deep threes. And the Broncos up 24-16 halfway through the first half. There is a steal by Cam Martin, leads the break. Tough pass for Omar Stanley, and it's picked up by Keont Myers. Touch pass outside, three ball off the mark for Chris Cook. And he does it all. Cam Meyer Martin with the rebound, and he leads a fast break. He gets the pass from Stanley. The ball kicked, and here comes Chris Cook. Cook, corner, triple up and in for Carson Frinke. Wolves doing a great job of creating defense to offense, and they do a great job of finding that extra player. They play four guards almost all, all, all the game, but they'll find that extra player wide open as we see Max back with his third three of the game. Nine for Rice. Bronco shooting 64.5% from the field. The Wolves at 57%. This is just what the doctor ordered for Max Rice. 
coming into this game shooting under 20% from three. We knew that was going to come up. He's had cold starts before. He has the confidence to shoot himself out of them. Three for three from distance today, nine points. Pass thrown away by Anderson. The turnover bug plagues Roddy again. Now the drive underneath and blocked by Stanley. Ball loose and Omar picks it up. Good interior defense by Omar. And that time, Nicky did what the coach has said. He went straight up. Just got to use his athleticism to his advantage. Doesn't make the percentage play. See Abo again. He had a couple four-point plays against North Texas, and he's got another opportunity now. His first bucket of the game from the corner. That's his sweet spot. I mean, this is crazy. That's the fourth time in the last two games he's been fouled shooting a three-point attempt. And he will go to the line. The Broncos just won a five from the line so far this afternoon. He has that jump shot where he just jumps a little bit forward. Legs go up a little bit, but this is a traction for him to get fouls from the three-point line the fourth time in two games. Shot a career-high nine free throws they, on, en route to a career-high 27 points against North Texas on Tuesday. Also made a career-high six three-pointers. That speaks to the efficiency when you can do that. 27 points on 11 shots. Converts the rare four-point play. Well, rare for most people, but it's become <laughs> habit for him. And there was a whistle and a reach foul spotted on the outside on Max Rice. Degenhart and Whiting are back in the game for Boise State. And Makai McIntyre checks back in for Western Oregon. Their head coach, Wes Pfeiffer, in his fifth season, a record of 43 and 45. Now Anderson, a late check into the lineup, replaces Rice. Rice and Degenhart with nine points apiece. McIntyre gives it up to Myers. They've done a good job on keeping him quiet today. And here's Anderson throwing it down. Wow, there's the athleticism from the guard. And we will go to break as we watch Roddy Anderson with the steal and the slam. Broncos up comfortably over the Wolves. Well, after struggling from beyond the arc early in the season, Max Rice today three of three from long range. Jay mentioned exactly what the doctor had ordered ending the game shooting under 20% from the three-point line. But as you see, once he gets those feet set, that's a dagger from the three-point line. Obviously, a slow start to the season, but last year, he was the first player since 1992 and 1993 to shoot above 40% from the field, above 40% from three, and above 85% from the free throw line. And that's starting one from 26 from the three-point line. So very efficient. We knew this was going to turn for Max to start the season. And See if he continue this here into the second half as well. Broncos on a 9-0 run. Have hit their last six shots. This is Keont Myers. Takes it against Anderson. Maybe partially blocked by Stanley, but following it up and in is Myers with the bucket. He's doing a bit of everything for the Wolves tonight. Four points, four rebounds, three assists. He's going to be the main focal point of the Wolves offense tonight. Jace Whiting lines up the three. It's off the mark. And then the rebound grabbed by McIntyre. Here comes Keont Myers. Back to McIntyre. Stanley on him. Did a good job to make the guard give it up. That's a tough assignment for a big guy to have to stick with a guard. But Omar did a nice job. There's a deep three right wing. Curling it in is Chris Cook. Pretty impressed with Western Oregon. They really do run their sets. They don't speed. They don't seem like they're sped up or overwhelmed going up against a Division One team. Wolves have been pretty good so far this afternoon. And a whistle on the baseline. And a foul against the Wolves. That is their eighth. So it'll be free throw time for Boise State. Broncos, about the only thing that's not going right for them today is the free throw line. They are just two of six from the stripe. Degenhart. That one curls off. 
Broncos sharing the ball well. They have 11 assists on their 13 buckets, so it's good distribution. I was just going to say, that's something that really stands out to me, some encouraging signs this afternoon. 11 assists on 13 made field goals. Boise State will take that any day of the week. Degenhart misses a pair. He's a 76% foul shooter, but Boise State with the offensive rebound and a reset of the clock. Underneath, Omar, excuse me, Chibazo Abo. Chibuzo Abo, there we go with the bucket on Martin's assist. So there's another assist on a bucket. And the Broncos taking advantage of their size with the rebound off the missed free throw. Myers underneath. Good defense by Martin and Degenhart. Gets the return pass from Anderson. A little too far for Cam Myers, but he runs it down in the near corner. Draws the double, and that ball kicked around, but it comes out to Whiting. Jace with 13 on the shot clock. The runner doesn't go. The tip by Abo, no good. And then Degenhart hits the deck on the rebound, and I think the foul was called. Yes. And they call the foul on Tyson Degenhart. That'll be his second. So Rice checks back in. Broncos obviously shooting the ball well from the three-point line, but a key emphasis today of getting the ball inside. I think that's what was really opened up the three-point shooting today is focusing on getting the ball inside, paint touches, and from there, finding Max Rice, Degenhart for the three as well. Chris Cook drives and doesn't get it to go. And the rebound by Rice. We kind of expected Western to do what North Texas did and look for those lanes, but so far their game mostly has been perimeter this afternoon as Rice backing down low draws the foul, and he will go to the line. Denzel with the foul. Another, another paint touch here for the Broncos. Max Rice, guard play inside, forcing that foul, but as you mentioned with the Wolves on offense looking to exploit Boise State, and there was big emphasis this week on guarding their players, trying not to get into rotations too much. So we see Max hitting the first three free throw field goal, but trying to stay with their man, as we saw against University of North Texas, they did a great job of driving the lanes, creating fouls, early bonus shots for them. But they've done a great job tonight of staying in front of their play and not relying on that second line of defense. Rice now in double figures with 11. The Bronco lead is back to 13. Western had cut it to two at 15-13. As we approach five minutes here in the first half. Denzel gives it up. Baseline pass for the three-pointer in the corner. Nothing but net for Chris Cook. I've been really impressed with the Oregon, Western Oregon, especially Myers. He's done a great job. The Broncos trying to double him on. Every pick and roll force the ball out of his hands, but he's done a great job tonight distributing the ball with his fifth assist on the night. Abo gets the screen from, My from Martin. High post Stanley drives, draws the foul, doesn't get the finger roll to drop, but he will go to the free throw line as Western Oregon now with their 10th foul. So it'll be double bonus the rest of the way for Boise State. Western Oregon going to a little 2-3 zone, try to switch up their defense, but it's a Broncos continued theme tonight, getting the ball inside and attacking the rim. Yeah, they've done a good job of not really settling for anything in the mid-range game, right? They have eight layups or dunks, and then five threes out of 14 made field goals. That's just only one left over for something in the mid-range. Broncos with the miss again on the free throw. 18 points in the paint, as Jay alluded to, and now the ball out of bounds to Western Oregon. Gosh, you love 12 first half free throw attempts, right? Yeah. Don't love the don't love the free throw percentage. Yeah, though. the five made out of 11, and it's sort of been an epidemic. Everybody struggled from the line except Abo and Rice are three for three combined. But it's sort of a virus that's spread to the entire club this afternoon. This is Keon Myers working on the double team. 
may have tri tri double dribbled. They didn't call it. And the steal by Max Rice. Broncos look to run. Rice, nifty move at the top of the key. Down low for Martin, and he fumbled it out of bounds. Well, the sixth turnover for Boise State spoils a fast break opportunity. And Leon Rice is going to take a timeout. And will we keep it here? We will take a break as well. Broncos up by 11 on the Mountain West Network on KTVB. Wes Pfeiffer in his fifth season with Western Oregon out of Monmouth, 43 and 45 career record. And his team placed fifth in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference last season. Overall at 12 and 14. And this is just the second time these two teams have met. You have to go way back to 1982 for Boise State to have won here at what is now Extra Mile Arena. Wolves will inbound. Bronco showing some full court pressure. As it's safely brought across by McIntyre. Out to Myers. Anderson on him. Nice pass down low to Gallant. Or Benzel, rather, outside for the three ball. Counted for Chris Cook. He's hit another one. That's his ninth point. He is three of five from long range. Boise State's done a good job at defending the three-point line this season. Not so much today, Nick. They've done a great job of just moving that basketball as we see three ball from Arbo to add to his collection for the day. But the Wolves have done a great job just moving that basketball. They're trying to get the ball out of Meyer's hands as we see a foul and a reach there by Martin. But done a great job of just moving that basketball. And as you mentioned, they've done a great job holding teams and opponents to under 25% from the three-point line, but have just done a great job of moving that basketball. I mean, for the most part, Boise State's done a good job of limiting three-point attempts for opponents, right? You see Western Oregon here in the first half, they've gotten off 10, they've made six. Good job by the Wolves. Abba with the rebound of the missed free throw by Myers. Keont just four points today. There's Max Rice. He misses his first. But Omar Stanley cleans it up and gets the foul. He'll go to the line for the three-point attempt. Omar just taking up space down low, cleared out, and put it home. After Boise State really challenged themselves with his early season schedule, you could almost maybe view today's game of an extension of what they've really been working on in practice. Western Oregon, yes, they are a good team. But athletically, Boise State is superior. We'll call a spade a spade, right? And I feel like Boise State is taking what they've done in practice and really starting to execute it in the game here today. RJ Keene, the redshirt sophomore from the Woodlands, Texas, checks in for the first time today. I mean, offensively, Boise State 44 points with three minutes to go in the first half. That puts them right around on pace for 100 today. Shooting 61.5% from the field as well. Outside is Chris Cook. He's been deadly from long range today. Keen on him. Keen had a little trouble keeping up with faster guards in that North Texas game. Picked up a couple quick fouls. That time, good defense, and Rice comes away with it. Now Boise State switching to a three-guard offense. And there's Max Rice hitting another triple. He's feeling it today. 2-3 defense by the Wolves, but great ball moving. Again, paint touch out to Max. It's nothing better than getting Chris Pass from the inside for three for Max Rice. Gallant pulls up inside the three-point line and buries the jumper. Gallant with 11 now to lead Western. He's done a great job tonight. A few confident shots to start the game, but really bringing some energy to the Wolves offense. Gallant's season high, as I said earlier, 21 points against San Bernardino. Guns the pass in the corner. Here's Anderson attacking, finds Martin for the soft shot. No, and the rebound tipped around, taken out of the air by Keen. Max Rice has another one. The hoop looks big for Max Rice tonight. Exactly what he needed and his confidence tonight. He'll be looking at a couple more to the game as we see Max getting fouled. Max over the previous four games 
one of 13 from three combined. He's already made five today. He had seven on the entire season coming into this afternoon. Max Rice on fire today. This is exactly, again, not only what Max needed, but what this Boise State basketball team needed. They need him to be a dude if they want to go to a third straight NCAA tournament. Already a season high in points with 17. His previous high was 15 against San Francisco. So Max getting on track on this afternoon game. Like I said, he's got to tell Dad we need to schedule more afternoon <laughs> games. I'm awake. I'm playing. I'm good. Myers hits a pair. I said this kind of jokingly on Tuesday, Nick. Boise State, they haven't shot it super well to start the season. They've played a lot of road games across the country. Does it make a difference coming back home, shooting on your home rims? Oh, absolutely. Obviously, it's a hoop that they practice on every single day. Rice on the way up is fouled. That was a bit of a heat check before with that triple that missed, but the offensive rebound, the Broncos now out rebounding Western Oregon 16 to seven, including seven offensive rebounds. And Nick, you know more than anybody, the coaches love to see when you're aggressive on the offensive glass. They're only out rebounded two teams this year, obviously coming off, off a season where their rebounding margin was above five or six per game. And tonight they wanted to come in and dominate the rebounds as they see it. They're above 10 rebounds compared to the Wolves. Rice, he's got both free throws, giving him 19 points today. And the Bronco lead is 52-34. Western Oregon into the forecourt. Gallant out to Keont Myers. Roddy Anderson on him. Game could be a good confidence boost for Roddy defensively and on the offensive end. But if you play defense, you're going to play. There's a off-balance three by Cook. No good. And Martin with the rebound high in the air. Quick outlet to R.J. Keene. Drives, and he will go to the basket get fouled and head to the free throw line. R.J. Keene on a really nice 75-foot outlet pass by Cam Martin. Got some great minutes off the bench for the Broncos this year. We see their hard finish to the hoop. I think we focused on the fact that Cam Martin was a scorer for most of his college career. This guy can really distribute the basketball, though, for a big. He already has six assists in his ball game as Boyce State has 15 as a team on 18 field goals made. You don't expect your big guy to be your leading assist man, but you're right, Jay. He has really done the number today. One of two for R.J. Keene as we're in the final 35 seconds of the first half. You won't even really get credit for that last one there. The right. long outlet pass. R.J. goes to the free throw line. We're keeping track, though, Cam. We know what's up. Keont Myers guns the pass over to Cook. Chris Cook, that's off the front rim. Another rebound for Martin. Boise State can hold for the final shot. Shot clock is off. Max Rice thought about it, pulled it back down. You see the time inside six seconds. Rice hesitates, step back, fires the three. That'll be short. The rebound, Keen up and towards the basket, but doesn't get it to go. And the first half ends with Boise State leading 53-34. You're watching the Mountain West Network on KTVB. We are at the half at Extra Mile Arena. Boise State on top of Western Oregon 53-34 with Jay Tusk and Nick Duncan. I am Mark Snyder. And gentlemen, Boise State coaches wanted a performance like this today. They so far have gotten it. Max Rice sparking things early. 19 points in the first half. The fourth time in his career he's made five three-pointers in a game. All of those were last season. So he really was the straw that stirred the drink to get things going. Yeah, this is the 136th career game that Max has played in. He's only cracked 20 points in a game seven occasions. He's one shy of that today. His career high, by the way, 30. Worth keeping track of this afternoon, probably, the way he's shooting it. Bronco's doing a great job against 
the Wolves defense moving to a 2-3 zone, but they've done a good just moving the ball. Once he gets those feet set, he's he's accurate from that three-point line. It's a bit of an unorthodox shot, but it works. It works. But exactly as Jay was mentioning before, it's not just for him, but it's for the Broncos in general, for their offense. For them to get going this year, Max has to be providing on the court on the offensive end. I know, I know you could probably relate to man. When Max catches that ball and he gets those seams and he lets it go in rhythm, you can just tell that thing's going down. Well, Western Oregon not too shabby from beyond the arc as well as the Wolves have found a lot of success this afternoon from the three-point range. And that's really the nature of their game, especially with a three-guard offense. The Wolves are 50% from beyond the arc, shooting six of 12 today. They do a great job of finding that extra player. Myers with six assists, and he's done a great job of attacking the pick and roll. Broncos trying to get the ball out of his hands, but he's finding that extra player. And as we mentioned, that's the offense for the Wolves, shooting six from 12, 50% from the three-point line. Yeah, Boise said they were gonna try to, you know, force Western Oregon to drive a little bit more. The Broncos have only surrendered 10 points in the paint to the Wolves, but you can see Western Oregon making them pay from distance. Well, the Broncos, we knew, had a size advantage, and they've really taken that to heart today with 20 of their 53 points in the paint. Obviously, coming from last game, Arbo doing a great job. The identity of the offense for the Broncos is usually from the three-point line, but they've done a great job today of starting the offense in the paint, trying to get paint touches and that leading to three-point shots. But the size advantage inside, Cam Martin with his assist, they've done a great job of attacking the basket, getting points in the paint. So much of what we've said Boise State wanted to work on, needed to work on coming into this game, you feel like it's starting to show up. Ball movement, fluid on offense, Max is shooting the three better, and you look at the battle of the boards, for the first time, maybe this season, Boise State winning that battle decisively. Holding Western Oregon 19 to eight, advantage on the boards for the Broncos. They lead at the half, 53 to 34. We're back with more halftime activities from Extra Mile Arena after we take this time out on the Mountain West Network on KTVB. Boise State at the half here at Extra Mile Arena leading the Western Oregon Wolves from the Great Northwest Athletic Conference 53 to 34. Let's take a look at some of the numbers and guys we've talked a little bit about these early on but the numbers are pretty impressive and have to make a coach smile in the locker room at the half. From last game I think Coach Rice is looking at that turnovers of six having 12 last game and 20 overall they've done a better job tonight of protecting the basketball moving that ball around and I think that's really led to their high field goal percentage of 58.1 percent but obviously for the Wolves 50 percent from the three-point line they'll look to attack again in the second half try to cut into this lead from the three-point line and I want to mention the block line that should be rebounds 19 to 8 and we've not had 19 block shots in this game that would be some sort of uh, send that tape to Springfield Mass in the Hall of Fame but the point being and, and you, you said it Nick you know Boise State had things they wanted to work on and so far the team has listened to the coaches and it's sunk in absolutely um, as the as, as the season progresses for the Broncos they're just trying to improve each game one by one obviously the end goal being in March and Last game, there was a few discrepancies in the game, things they needed to work on, but uh, they've done a great job today of coming back tonight in the first half and see if they can continue that into the second half. And again, 15 assists on 18 made baskets. That's another good number. More halftime comes your way next from Extra Mile Arena. Welcome back to Extra Mile Arena. The Western Oregon Wolves trailing the Boise State Broncos 53 to 34. Coming up for the Wolves, they continue their season on the road at San Francisco. They will take on the Academy of Art in San Francisco next week, and then they will host Cal Poly Humboldt. You see their schedule. They lost to Northwest Nazarene University their last go around. Then they will take on Western Washington, Simon Frazier, and then St. Martin's, the number one preseason pick in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference as the Wolves were picked to finish eighth in that conference. A lot of uh, pull out the, the atlas and figure out where some of these schools are. 
That, uh, that game with Northwest Nazarene, I know, was a battle. Big win for the Nighthawks, the uh, neighbors to the west for the Boise State football team. That was a 65-62 NNU win. And then we look at the Boise State schedule. We've touched on it, the travel, the, the high level of competition. It doesn't get a whole lot easier, but they do have more home games coming up. Northwestern State, Cal State Fullerton before a trip to play Wazoo up in Spokane. I know Leon Rice says, hey, take it one game at a time. They're not looking past anyone on their schedule, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because <laughs> we talked about Boise State's winning streak at home. They got a chance to keep this thing intact all the way until January 9th when they welcome Colorado State to town. The Rams might be undefeated by then. That could be an epic matchup. Broncos leading the Wolves at the half. Second half comes your way next. Coach Leon Rice's team has faced a lot of live bullets this season, if you will, leading here this afternoon at the half, but they have had, we talked about it, a gauntlet. Look at that strength of schedule as it compares to the competitors in the Mountain West. Boise State's average opponent net ranking of 79, obviously the fourth best rating. All three losses coming in quad one and quad two games. Spoke to the coaching staff before the start of the season, and they did this on purpose. They wanted to have some substance on their schedule heading into March. They didn't want people to judge their schedule. They wanted them to play some hard games heading into the conference schedule. And some tough road games. I mean, playing Butler on the road and playing, you know, Clemson and some some really tough teams. Colorado State at 9-0, and ranked 13th in the country, hosts St. Mary's today. Boise State beat St. Mary's in Idaho Falls last week. Elsewhere in the Mountain West, Wyoming is taking on Stephen F. Austin, Santa Clara, New Mexico. That should be a good game. And Jack Jones Classic in Henderson, Nevada. We'll get you other Mountain West action this afternoon. But we are underway in the second half. The Wolves in red with the ball to start the second 20 minutes. In the lane, up and in. Push shot by Chris Cook. Cook now with 11. He and Gallant leading Western Oregon on the scoreboard. Same five that started the game for the Broncos. This is Whiting, gets a pass from Martin. Stanley, outside, Abo hits the triple. Great ball movement by the Broncos. Abo continuing his hot streak behind the three-point line. Another assist for Boise State, their 16th of the game. In the Leon Rice era, when they record 15 or more assists, they are 106 and 17. That is an 862 win percentage. And I misspoke. Degenhart starts the second half on the bench in favor of Cam Martin. So not the same five. Gallant gets the return pass from Frinky. Gallant rises, fires off the mark, and Martin clears the glass. Quick outlet to Whiting. Jace looks down low instead. They pass from the high post is taken away. Nice anticipation by Cam Benzel to take the pass away. And then a foul at the other end on the Broncos. Cam Martin called for the foul. Myers, Cook, Gallant, Benzel, and Frankie. The five on the floor for Western Oregon. This is Jason Gallant. Transfer from Colorado Christian. Had seven rebounds against NNU the other night. Hits the first. Shot 14 free throws against Cal State Monterey Bay. So this is the guy that knows how to draw contact and get to the foul line. Oh, their starting five is good. I mean, you, you look at Boise State, yeah, they have more depth. All 37 of Western Oregon's points so far from their starting lineup. Degenhart back in as Gallant hits the pair, giving him 13. The Broncos up 56-38. Whiting to Abo gets the Stanley screen. Dishes it out to Degenhart. Looks down low to Stanley. Omar with the back. The spin and the dunk. That's probably not a move many folks in Division II get a lot of looks at. Stanley with the slam. Now underneath. Back the other way comes Benzel with the inside bucket. Bit of offense from both, both teams to start the second half. Wow, what a, what a play by Stanley. 
On the tough catch on the entry pass. Now here's Avo, spots for three. That's a little off. And the rebound pulled down by Gallant. Quickly the other way, the three ball, count it. Frinky with the bomb from the left angle. That's what they can do, and that's their offense centered around moving the basketball, trying to push, four guard play, shooting above 50% from the three point line. Wolves hanging around, down 15. Pass underneath for Omar Stanley. Reverse lays it in. Back to back buckets for Omar Stanley. Boise stayed up to 24 points in the paint, continuing to get that ball inside and exploiting some of the high differentials. Stanley in the double figures, by the way. Four of four shooting, four rebounds, three assists, a steal, and a block. Just corralled the loose ball right there. It is amazing what he can do for this basketball team when he just kind of stays out of foul trouble. Underneath, Tyson Degenhart. He's in double figures now with 11. 62-43, Boise State just three minutes into the second half. Keont Myers outside, lean, lanky junior guard from, Fres from Fresno, California's Roosevelt High School. Underneath, tough lane in traffic by Cam Benzo. Strong, hot, strong start for the Wolves coming out of the halftime break. Western Oregon shooting 53% from the field and Boise State 61%. Underneath, Stanley, his first miss of the game. Rebound, Max Rice gets it. Spins in the lane and dishes it out to Abo. Degenhardt, wide open, hesitates, drive, slam. That's three. Let's edit those together to a highlight film and show it to him because that's three dunks for Degenhardt. He's never had two in a game in his college career and now he goes up and gets a third. I can't wait to ask him about this after the game. I don't know what he had for breakfast. Outside, Cook. That's off the mark. Rice leading the way with 19. Four players in double figures for the Broncos. Nice pass to Degenhardt. Doesn't get it to go. But he will go to the foul line on a nice pass from Omar Stanley. Boise State. Taking advantage of the size inside. Omar Stanley's got 10. Broncos up big. Omar Stanley, the transfer from St. John's, making his presence felt here this afternoon. He's done a great job of getting that ball inside, as we see. He's got some athleticism, but he also has some IQ. He's been really patient with the ball, finding the extra player. When he's on the court and stays out of foul trouble, he does some good things. And the Broncos are going to need that heading into conference season. They were so excited about landing him out of the transfer portal. And yes, I do think a lot of it has to do with his ability on the floor, but he is a really high character type of guy that is going to make winning plays for this team once they get into Mountain West Conference play. Degenhardt to the free throw line, just one of three there today. And he hits that one, giving him 14 points. Had some big free throws to help Boise State close out that North Texas game on Tuesday. Really turned it on late for the Broncos. He rattles home the second. Bronco lead is 21. Outside the three ball is good. That's Carson Frinke from San Diego's Carlsbad High School. Shot 41% from three-point range as a high school senior, and he's keeping that up here at the Division II level. That is assist number 10 for Keontae Myers as well, doing a great job distributing the balls for the Wolves. Taken away by Western Oregon. Here comes Myers again. Season high in assists is 13 against Multnomah earlier this season. This is Gallant, he rises, an air ball, pinball out of bounds, and they'll give it to Western Oregon. Frankie came down with it, sort of bounced off a couple Bronco players. Did they get a foul on the play? Oh. No. Well, a technical foul against the Western Oregon bench. 
looking for a call on that play, didn't get it, and we're vocal about it. Our officiating crew haven't talked about them today, which is usually a good sign if you don't talk about them. Thomas Nunez, Jimmy Casas, and James Shipper keeping things in check today. There's Max Rice now up to 20 points. Nick, you just mentioned Keont getting into double digits for assists. He has four assists in the first five minutes of this second half. Western Oregon has five field goals. He's assisted on four of them to open up the second half. Broncos came into the game noticing how well he's been playing to start the season and trying to double pick and rolls, get the ball out of his hands, but he might not have scored as many points as he usually does, but he's been distributing for the Wolves. We see a beautiful play above the rim and another assist from Myers. Cameron Benzel up high, draws the foul, will get the three-point opportunity. Watch this one again. Keen with the foul, the inbounds pass, and Benzel puts it home. R.J. Keen draws the personal foul. Six field goals, six assists to start the second half for the Wolves. And Cam Benzel now with nine points as he hits the free throw. That's the third team foul on Boise State. Roddy Anderson back in the game. Bring the ball up across the timeline for the Broncos. Cam Martin up top. Back to Anderson. Rice outside, moving well without the ball. Hesitation move on the baseline. Pretty move by Max Rice. Kind of lulled them to sleep and then turned on the Jets. He started the first half with five three-pointers. That's what happens. Hit a few threes, defense starts to play up and in you, try to get you off that three-point line. Be able to see Max open up the court a little bit, attacking the paint. 23 now for Rice on six of 10 shooting. Broncos as a team still over 61%. Fifth most points he's had in a single game in his career, 23. Roddy Anderson clears that miss. Rice thought about it, drives, and is stripped and fouled. But you see Cam Martin in the lane, occupying two Wolves defenders with that screen, giving Max Rice loads of room in the paint. See here, a little shot fake. That's what five three-pointers does, and does a great job getting into the paint and getting to the line for two. Even with his shooting struggles in the early season, Max is one of the best free throw shooters in the conference. That one almost got the announcer's jinx, but rolled in. <laughs> Rice now seven of seven from the stripe, 24 points. Gosh, you talk about what he's done from behind the R2 tonight. Five three-point field goals made. That's tied the second most that he's had in a single game in his career. Six is his, is his career high against Nevada la uh, last year, last January. Broncos up 72-51. Making life miserable for Keont Myers, and he has to pull the ball back to midcourt. Pounds that right-hand dribble. Now crosses it over. Attacks, spins. Good defense by the Broncos. And Myers wanted the foul, didn't get it. Back the other way. Boise State too tall for Keen, and it goes out of bounds. Anderson tried the hero pass. Couldn't quite get it. And now he gets a little discussion from his head coach. Yeah, I don't want to take away from the fact that Roddy's played pretty good today, but that's right. kind of the pass that they want him to dial back on, right? You don't have to make the hero pass, make the routine pass, make the simpler play, and you can prevent a turnover in that scenario. Still just nine turnovers on Boise State. There's a reach by Keene on the drive. That'll be the fourth team foul on Boise State. People don't realize, Nick, you play defense with your feet. And that's, the footwork is almost more important than anything. So when you see a guy reach and get a foul like that, does that mean that the feet aren't as active as they need to be? Yeah, a little bit like, a little bit that. I think closing out is the key with defense, making sure you're not over rotating, not over closing out. From there, that leads to blow buys. And that's where you really need to move your feet over to see a five-second violation from Western Oregon. Roddy Anderson forcing that turnover, and this is the seventh career 20-point-plus game for Max Rice, and he stays on the floor. 
Closely guarded outside by Frinke. He gets the ball. Backs in on Frinke. Max guns the pass to Degenhart. Abo top for three. Count it. 19th assist for the Broncos. Their most since 19 against Colorado State last season. Abo now up to 12 points. Rebound by Anderson. Roddy dishes behind him to Max. Long three, straight away, count it. 28 for Max Rice. And Two. Western Oregon takes a timeout. Broncos have opened the lead to 78-51. Max Rice, Shaba Shabuzo Abo, long range. Boise State cruising. Coming off a 27-point effort Tuesday night. Buzo Abo picking up where he left off. Six from nine from three against North Texas. Now coming out four from six, ten three-point field goals. But I think as we speak to the coaching staff, he's a pro. He turns up every day. His emotions stay even keel. He doesn't ride the roller coaster of ups and downs. He turns up every day. He scored 27 points on Tuesday night. It was the first one in the gym getting reps up. I think that's what's key to him really performing to start the season, putting a lot of work in the gym, and it's really showing off here to start the season. I probably sound like a broken record talking about this, but uh, Chibuzo put in so much work in the offseason. He was physically ready to take on his senior year in college. That ball goes out of bounds to Western Oregon. One thing that, you know, we talked about Abo in the 2070 the other day, Today, it's Max Rice, and, and it's a different guy every night, and Abo seems content to let somebody else shine. He doesn't have to have the spotlight on him. He doesn't have to be the guy. This is the team this year for the Broncos, and we could have eight to nine different players scoring the game high in points, and I think with this team, they're very unselfish, and as we see Omar head to the bucket inside of the paint, but they're unselfish. They don't care who's going to be the leading scorer, they just want to win games, and we, we will see that throughout the year. Different players providing different sparks at different times. Stanley showing a nice left hand. He's got 12. He's 5 of 6 from the field. Outside, way off the mark for Myers. Jace Whiting tracks down the rebound. Leads the scattered floor break. Now slows it down. Degenhart, right of the basket, guarded by Guananji. Underneath, Tyson Degenhart and the foul. Boise State continuing to share the ball well. Assist number 20 for the Broncos. And we have a timeout on the floor. The crowded Extra Mile Arena has seen their Broncos out to an 82-51 lead, holding Western Oregon scoreless over the last three minutes and 12 seconds and scoring 14 straight on their own to take what at one time was a relatively close game, Jay, and kind of broadening the margin. I didn't think Boise State could elevate their play in the second half. They're 10 of 12 shooting, 83.3% since coming out of the locker room, and all of a sudden, as you just said, the uh, lead now has ballooned to 31. Degen Hart completes a three-point play. He's got 18. The Broncos, for the game, 65% shooting from the field. And now Western Oregon just under 50% for the contest. Mikayo Morphy in the game for the Wolves, wearing number 12. But the ball comes out to Myers. Myers, nice step through move, bounces off the friendly iron and drops for him. He's been Myers really, with eight. really impressive for the Wolves tonight. I think the Broncos have done a great job of trying to get the ball out of his hands, scoring 17.1 points this game. But I feel like he's going to start being aggressive here towards the end of the game. Max Rice sitting on 28 points, drives, doesn't get it to drop. And the rebound by Benzel. Max had, at the time of career, had 29 points last year against Nevada. And the thing I appreciate about Max Rice as an athlete is he said that he knew he was at 29 as Western Oregon gets a three to go down. And he really wanted a 30-point game. A month later, he came out and he got that 30-point game against New Mexico. I guarantee he knows he is two points shy of his second career 30-point game right now. Cook with 14, but it's taken him 13 shots to get there. Here's Abo. 
clear path to the basket, lays it home. Abba with 17. Very balanced scoring for the Broncos, and layups certainly help your shooting percentage. You're not kidding about that. 12 layups today, five dunks, 17 total buckets right at the rim. Three-pointer, count it. That's Morphy from Bishop San Diego, or Bishop Diego in Santa Barbara, California. Deontay Myers is putting on a show on the passing. Any young kids out there want to see how to distribute a ball, keep your eyes up, find the open player, he's the guy as we see another four-point opportunity from Chibuzo Abo. I know they don't track that stat, but that would be fascinating to see how many of those he's had this season and where he stands in the NC2A ranks. He draws the foul from Morphe and yet another four-point opportunity for Abo. I think that Chibuzo Abo is going to force that into being a stat. <laughs> yeah, I think so. He's got 20, so two Broncos with 20-plus points. Abo curls that free throw in. He's got 21. Rice with 20. Degenhardt 18. Stanley 12. Abo's efficiency these last two games is wild. He has only taken 21 total shots these last two contests. 48 points on 21 shots. Frankie off the mark, and there's Stanley High for the rebound. That is his sixth rebound of the afternoon. Here's Max Rice. Whiting. And Degenhardt as they work the perimeter. Abo rises and it buries another three. 51 points on 22 total shots over the last two games. That is pretty impressive. The thing is, he gets some wide open shots, but it's almost like he likes a player in his face. As we see Wolves heading to the free throw line or side out of bounds, but it's, it's almost like he likes someone up in his face. Hence four three-point fouls. You see here, I mean, there's a hand in their face. Highly contested shot, but extremely efficient. Guys, points per possession for Boise State in the second half, 1.857. Wow. Like 1.1 is pretty darn good, right? Yeah. They're almost double that. 13 of 16 shooting, 81.3%. Five of six from three for the Broncos in the second half. Chris Cook from the top. That's too strong. Rebound, battled for, and Whiting comes down with it. That Abo three reminded me of... One of your favorite former Cougs. That was a very much a uh, Clay Thompson catch and shoot, quick release three from the corner. I'll take that comparison. Yeah. And foul on the Wolves, so the Broncos side out. Up 92-59 with 8.42 to go. The question might be is at what point does Leon Rice empty the bench and give some other guys a chance to play? Stanley off the deflection. Whiting, why not? Buries the three. And that's six for Whiting, and now a timeout taken by Boise State. They're up 95-59, and maybe now is the time Leon Rice says, guys, it's been a good afternoon. Let's give somebody else a chance to play. Another assist for the Broncos. As a team, they continue to rack them up. 22 assists on the game. In the Leon Rice era, Boise State 19-1 when they get 20, more, 20 or more assists in a contest and their only loss all the way back in Leon's very first year here in Boise. Boise State with 28 from Leon, uh, from uh, Max Rice, 24 from Abo. It's the first time with two players scoring 20 plus points since last year when they played Nevada. So the offense definitely in gear this afternoon as Andrew Meadow checks in for Boise State. Also into the game for the Broncos. It looks like Kobe Young checks in. Does Max Rice get a chance at 30? He is not on the floor right now. So it'll be Stanley, Keene, Whiting, Dagenhart. Now Rice back on the floor. And Young and Meadow will have to check in at the next dead ball opportunity, I believe. I bet you Max looking over his shoulder right now, knowing that he only has a couple more possessions to get to 30. The magic number for him. He's done it once before in his career. We'll see if he can get two more to get him over the hump today. Outside Gallant. 
Picked up there by Stanley. Back to Frankie, back to Gallant. Gallant guarded by Keene. Gives it up to McIntyre. McIntyre rises and missed. Rebound by Omar Stanley. Here comes Jace Whiting. Sophomore out of Burley. Did his two-year mission in Finland. Of course, we've talked about his mom, Amber, the head coach at BYU. Quite a move from 4A high school ball in Burley, Idaho, to the now Big 12 BYU. But he's had a lot of success here this season. There's Max. Too strong. Degenhart with the rebound. Will they look for Max to feed him? Stanley at the top, off the mark with the three. And Gwenanji with the rebound for Western Oregon. He gets the ball down low, guarded by Tyson Degenhart. Backs in. Good defense by Degenhart, forces the pass out to Cook. And that's a good move as Cook buries the three from the corner. And Chris Cook with 17 this afternoon. That's a season high. Five from 11 from the three-point line, doing a great job of staying aggressive. Line change substitution upcoming for Boise State. So if Max wants his 30, he's going to have to do it now. But it looks like he's going to sit down. We have a timeout on the floor. Abo leading the three parade for Boise State. They're up big. Well, we talked about how this game can really help Boise State get back on track. Jay and Nick, so far, mission accomplished? I think so. They've done a great job protecting the basketball. Turnovers have been held under 10 at 9 right now. Done a great job on the rebounding front, 31 to 12, out-rebounding the Wolves by 19. I think Max Rice has got to be the headline, <laughs> getting him back yeah. on track, starting the season under 20% from three-point line, coming to having a strong night and see if that can kickstart his season. Martin lines up the three ball. That's off the mark. I, so feel, like, I feel like they've done just about everything that they wanted to accomplish coming into this game, and now you even get to test a little bit of your depth, give guys like Kobe Young, Andrew Meadow, RJ Keene some run in this game, and heck, even Roddy Anderson will get some extended playing time here down the stretch. Drive by Gallant, kicks it out. Deep three on the way for Frinky is no good. And Martin out battles his smaller teammate, Roddy Anderson, and gets the rebound. You don't want to run into big Cam Martin. They smile after that little bump. Now here's Roddy Anderson. Here's Keene, corner to Anderson. Meadow cleared out nicely by Martin, but the ball stripped and taken away by the Wolves. Myers in the forecourt. Frinky buries the triple. He's got 15. Five of nine from beyond the arc for Carson Frinke. Season high, 14 assists with the no-look cross-court pass right on the dime. He's passing the ball. Excellent. Might go a bit unnoticed. Points over assists, but he's doing a great job distributing the ball. Anderson in traffic drew the foul. Boise State nearly three minutes without a bucket, sitting at 95 points, trying to crack the century mark, something that they have done 17 times during the Leon Rice era. The last time it happened, December 2020, happened on New Year's Eve at San Jose State, a Mountain West Conference championship game. Boise State blown out the Spartans that night, 106-54. About the only thing that hasn't gone Boise State's way this afternoon, the free throw line. They're just 17 of 25. As Anderson, long with the first. He makes one of two. And the Broncos at 96. As we still have five minutes, 40 seconds to go in this one. Myers still in there, gone the whole way. He has played 31 minutes this afternoon. Leads the Wolves in playing time. He lofts it up high, knocked free, and Meadow comes down with it for the Broncos. Roddy Anderson, nice dish. Martin with the slam. They're on the cusp of the century mark this afternoon. And there's a nice layup reverse style by Cam Benzel. Benzel with 11. So four of the five starters, or Four of the five players on the floor right now for the Wolves in double figures. Their leading score, Myers, held with eight, but as Nick was talking about, 14 dimes. So good production across the board for the Wolves, but just 
outmanned against a Division I school as Martin draws the foul going down low. And Western Oregon was picked eighth in the Greater Northwest Athletic Conference preseason poll as you see Martin down low getting the foul on Benzel. St. Martin's was ranked number one preseason and the Northern or Northwest Nazarene University number two. And that one spins off the rim. This game counts for Boise State, but it's considered an exhibition game for Western Oregon as Cade Rice checks in for Roddy Anderson. Martin misses them both, but Meadow gets the century mark with the putback. Andrew Meadow is always bringing the energy. Coaches love how he practices, never takes a day off. Continues to see him provide some energy here at the end of the game. Martin gives that rebound up to his teammate Meadow and long hair flowing, brings it into the forecourt. Fan favorite already as a freshman. Gets it up to RJ Keene. Keene spins. Martin drives. Missed the right-hand dunk. Keene runs down the rebound. Meadow for three. Follow good Kobe Young. His first points of the day. Mentioned before, it's great to see some of these guys getting some extended minutes towards the end of the game. Obviously, very different to practice reps. Get some experience out here. You'll never know when the Broncos may need them down the stretch in conference play. Keont Myers, guarded by RJ Keene, crosses him over, spins, double, triple team now. And the shot clock violation, the Bronco defense. So we go to a timeout. We will see the big guy, Cam Martin, throwing it down. Broncos up big. Boise stayed up 102-67, three and a half minutes to go. Broncos look like they will comfortably extend this winning streak at home now to 18 straight games, which would tie Louisiana for fifth best in the NCAA current home winning streak. And you talked about it earlier, Nick. You need to protect the home floor because every road trip is going to be tough in this conference. Absolutely. Especially heading into conference play. Have to protect home court. Make sure you're going eight and two, seven and three minimum at home to give you a great shot at that regular season title. And their, their first conference home game, Jay talked about it January 9th, the currently undefeated and nationally ranked Colorado State Rams come to town. That's a tough way to open conference play at home. Kobe Young long with that three ball from the corner. Keen fires a long three again. And Mohamed Silla now in the game gets the ball back to Meadow. Under three minutes to go. Meadow, Silla throws it down. Nick, right off the top of this, you said that we were going to see some offense tonight. At that point in time, were you expecting 171 combined points? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I was expecting a great game, but yeah. both teams shooting the ball really efficiently, efficiently, getting the ball through hands. A lot of assists from both teams as well, not just individual ISO plays. Ball's been through hands, finding the open players. Um, great offensive display on tonight from both teams. I want to highlight Myers for a second. Not in the game right now, but you guys have brought up the fact that he has 14 assists. In the Leon Rice era, only Grant Sherfield from Nevada has had as many assists against the Broncos in a game. Grant Sherfield was okay at basketball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he knew what he was doing. That's impressive. Well, the coaches for Boise State knew that Myers was a D1 talent. Yeah. And uh, you can see why. Out of Roosevelt High School in Fresno, the 6'4 junior, started his 47th career game this afternoon as the free throw, Makai McIntyre hits the first. That gives McIntyre his first point of the game. They were really complimentary of Myers, though. Like, right at the top of our conference call, David Motes pointed out, like, this guy's a D1 talent right here, and he has certainly shown why. From his wallet... Meadow keeps it alive, but it's out of bounds to the Broncos. So we'll set the lineup. Cade Rice 
Mo Silla, Kobe Young, RJ Keene, and Andrew Meadow. The, a, a glimpse at the future, perhaps, with the exception of Mo Silla, who's a senior, but a lot of youngsters on the floor right now in the final 220. That ball kicked out of bounds. In the game for Western Oregon, for the first time, Tyler Ricketts, a senior guard. He's got Kobe Young as the inbounds pass comes to Andrew Meadow. Again, the crowd erupts as we see Sam Winter and Vince Berriger get off the Bronco bench. Keen, Meadow, head fake, step back, three on the way, count it. Andrew Meadow, the Broncos, averaging almost 21 points a game and 20 plus in three of the last four. 19 points today. Meadow will sit. Vince Berenger, Sam Winter check in. Berenger from San Carlos, California and St. Francis High School, a powerhouse in the South Bay area. Outside is Morphy, gives it up to McIntyre and he is fouled on a chest bump by Kobe Young. Minute 44 to go, Boise State well on their way to their 18th straight home court win. Next up, Monday, Northwestern State. You can catch that one right here on the Mountain West Network and KTVB. First free throw true for McIntyre. He's got two points. Western Oregon now shooting 49% from the field for the game. Broncos a shade under 61%. Both free throws good for McIntyre. Now the Broncos a little indecision as Winter brings it across the timeline. Cade Rice throws it to Tyson Degenhart. The problem is Tyson Degenhart's not in the game. <laughs> Speak a little about the bench scoring. Obviously, 20 plus points of three out of the last four games. Leon playing over 10 guys, a majority of the season. Coming into this season, a lot of talk about the depth that we see from some of the transfers. We see a travel here on the court, an added depth to the chart. And, you know, there was a little history of the Broncos underperforming in February, March, with last year and the past couple of years having some success. But I think Leon's kind of learned to go down the bench mm -hmm. instead of playing six to seven guys lay on them playing 34, 35 minutes. I think this year we'll see a lot of guys contribute, especially in conference with foul, foul trouble, sickness, injuries, whatever it may be. And they'll, they'll have 10, 11 guys being ready to play at any minute, at any moment. Yeah, Boise State, they've obviously taken this thing to, to new heights under Leon Rice, but the next step is finding a way to win that game at March Madness. And I think by extending their bench, and having that depth early in the season will save the wear and tear on some of their main players down the stretch, and it might help them just enough to go get that win in March because everything counts, everything matters that time of year. Sam Winter with his first points of the season. Makes it 109.70. Sam Winter, a big Mariner fan. Shohei Otani chose the Dodgers over the M's today. I think everybody needed that <laughs> in Seattle, especially Sam. I don't think the M's were ever in it, unfortunately. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't. 700 million, no way. Silla with the rebound. Final 10 seconds of this one. And Mo Silla gets to play point guard and bring it across the timeline. <laughs> Stick with us in our post-game show. We'll interview a couple of the players from today's game. We'll be talking to Max Rice and Shibuzo Abo as Boise State wins comfortably 109 to 70 to improve their record now to six and three and an 18 game home win streak here at Extra Mile Arena. We'll be back with post game stats and interviews and more coming up next on the Mountain West Network on KTVB. Welcome back to Extra Mile Arena. Boise State with a 109-70 win 
over Western Oregon with Jay Tuss, Nick Duncan. I'm Mark Snyder, joined courtside by one of the stars of today's game, Shibuzo Abo. Uh, another efficient afternoon for you today, coming off the 27 point against North Texas. 24 today. How did it feel out there today? Uh, it felt good. You know, um, we need this one to catch our rhythm a little bit. I think we did good on offense. Uh, we still got some stuff to do on defense, but I think we had a good game. When you look at this team, real quick, Nick, you know, a ton of assists. All, you know, at yeah. one point, 80 something percent. Mm -hmm. Shared the basketball really well. Four players in double figures. Was that the mindset coming in? Yeah, 100 percent. You know, every day in practice, uh, coach talks about making each other better, and that's what we did today. Uh, you know, we made each other better inside and out. So uh, I think we're really proud of each other for that. Got Max Rice coming up next on the post game interview, but. Obviously, six from nine tonight. Had a slow start to the season. We talk about how much that's going to bring his confidence up. But you know, from a team perspective, you know, what does he bring to the team, and you know, how is that going to move forward with him kind of getting back to his usual self? Right. He's definitely a big vet. Uh, he talks a lot for us, and uh, you know, we've been waiting for him to get started, and we we knew it was going to happen. Uh, so I think it's going to be a norm. You know, this this way it was last year. I think exactly it's going to be this year. So it was good to have him. Like, Boozo, you look at these last two games combined. 51 points on 22 shots. What does that efficiency mean for you and your team if you can keep it anywhere near that? Uh, I mean, I think it means a lot. Uh, I feel like when I shoot, I don't really do too much. You know, I come off screens, I shoot open shots. So uh, I think it really helps the team just space out. Uh, and when I'm open, I'm just going to shoot them. I can't, I can't believe we're asking you about this again. But once again, yeah. fouled, shooting a three two more times, yeah. two more four-point plays. Uh -huh. How do you continue to do this? Uh, I shoot the ball and guys foul me. I mean, I'm happy it happened tonight where I, I went up and shot the ball and I fell on his foot. So there you go. That wasn't a flop. You know, I, I fell right down on his foot. It's funny. One of, one of the better shooters in program history kind of mentioned this to me during the game. He said he almost like it feels like you like a guy kind of up in your face. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, we played San Francisco and one of the guys was talking about, you know, you only make contested shots. And I've been thinking about that since. So uh, I might shoot more open ones. <laughs> La after the last game, coaches were stressing rebounding, were stressing, you know, getting guys started and cutting down on the turnovers. Right. Mission accomplished today? Uh, somewhat, I think so, definitely, yeah. Uh, I think we got definitely better in some areas, but, you know, there's still a lot of work to do for us. I got one more. All right. And it's actually kind of for Nick. Do you get jealous of seeing Boozo out there continuing to connect? Remind you at all of, of your days. There's no jealousy whatsoever. <laughs> Maybe a bit of missing the game a little bit, hitting out there. But, you know, I'm a Bronco for life, and it's great yeah. to see those Broncos out there yeah. shooting the ball we well. Know, we know Nick left his legacy already. <laughs> <laughs> continuing to build yours, Boozo. Yes, Heck of a game tonight, man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys. Right, we'll see you Monday. Thank you. Shibuzo Abo with another strong effort today. 8 of 11 from the field, 24 points. Four rebounds, a couple of assists, only one turnover. He played 32 minutes, excuse me, 30, 26 minutes, and was plus 32 in the plus minus category. When you talk about plus minus, well, one guy on this team was better plus minus today than Abo. That was our next guest, Max Rice, plus 34 today. And, and Max, first of all, 28 points. Maybe you broke out of that early season doldrums on the shooting slump? Yeah, I feel like I've had that pretty much every year, so uh, it's nothing new, but it's good to just kind of get those shots to go in. Uh, it doesn't matter who it's against. It's more of a mental thing for me, uh, and it feels really good to, to have some of those go in. Given the way your season started when that first one went down today, did you kind of relax? Yeah, 100%. Before the game today, I was like, God, I just need that first one to fall, and when that one falls, I feel like all the weight will be off my shoulders. Uh, and it's just funny, I feel like, Everyone in Boise is trying to tell me how to play basketball just because I've had a couple shots not go in. But uh, I think the biggest thing is just keeping my confidence and keep going. Like Coach Rice has done a good job of always talking, the percentages are going to play out. Obviously starting the season slow. Anything different for your routine throughout the week, extra shots, or is it something that you just kind of go back to that percentages play out? I'm going to keep shooting, be confident, and see the ball go in the hoop. Yeah, Nick, I think you know you've been through uh, the long season grinds. It's just a long grind. So I think the biggest thing for me is just confidence. And uh, I've gotten up the reps. I know I can make them. I did it all last year. Uh, so I think the biggest thing for me is just keeping my head up and, and not listening to, to what people are telling me, you know? Absolutely. Max, as you guys continue to kind of figure out new things, new rotations, with Marcus Shaver Jr. gone in the backcourt this year, how are teams approaching maybe you a little bit differently? Yeah, I think uh, it's just kind of our chemistry right now. We, we haven't built it up. Like, I played with Shaver for four years. I played with Najee my whole entire life. 
Uh, so a big part of it is just trying to work out there with those new point guards and kind of teach them our culture and our system. And uh, Roddy's got a lot of people in his ear too as well. So I'm just trying to calm him down a little bit. Uh, and then and then we'll be good. I got one more question for you. I think I know what it is. I, I, last year after the Nevada game, at the time you had a career high 29 points, and you said in the post game interview you knew you wanted 30. You eventually got 30 against New Mexico. Yeah. Did you realize you were at 28 tonight? Yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> my excuse for not getting 30 is I didn't want it to tie my career high against Western Oregon. I want to keep that against I get uh, New, New Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, okay. That's why I missed that floater. It's all tactical. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yep. Well, four four players in double figures, balanced scoring, a lot of assists, a very uh, you know high shooting percentage for Boise State. All in all, the kind of win that I think the coaching staff will be happy with, and maybe they'll go easy on you before your next game. Hopefully, we get a day off. Uh, we're getting better. All right, <laughs> that's good. Max Rice, our guest here at half uh, post game show, Boise State with a convincing 109 to 70 win this afternoon against the Western Oregon Wolves. Boise State wins their 18th straight at home, and they improve on the season. Now to six and three, and let's take a look, gentlemen, at the final numbers, and they're going to be heavily t tilted towards the home team. 60% from the field goal line. I really think that started from getting the ball inside the paint, being more focused instead of the three-point line, getting some easy buckets, and that opens up the court for the Broncos. And obviously, rebounds, huge emphasis coming in for the Broncos, huge 29 Rebound discrepancy right there. Hopefully they can continue that on moving into conference season. You look, if there's games where you would take 22 made field goals for an entire contest, right? Uh, when it came to layups and dunks in this game for Boise State, 22 field goals made just right at the rim. You're going to win a lot of games and have great offensive efficiency if you can continue to do that. Max Rice, Chibuzo Wabo complimenting themselves really well. And we talked about the point guard play earlier in the broadcast. And if you look at the stat lines of both Roddy Anderson and Jace White, Whiting, they might have seemed relatively modest. thing I love about it, though, they combined for 37 minutes and only two turnovers between them. So I think that they're going to take that moving forward, a nice springboard forward, also six assists between between them, you love that assist to turnover ratio. I think the only thing you can be a little picky on is that free throw percentage mm -hmm. right there, 62%. Last year, upwards of 73, 74%. So, um, yeah. nothing to be too concerned about, but I'm sure Coach Rice is going to get them to shoot a few more extra free throws, <laughs> shoot 50, 100 after practice just to kind of get that percentage back up because every point matters, and especially as we get through the conference season, games are tight, those free throws really count. Another number that jumps out to me, offensive rebounds, 15 of their 43 rebounds on the offensive glass, leading to 24 second chance mm -hmm. points. Those are easy. Those are those layups. Those are the ones right at the rim, or you dish out to somebody for an easy three. So really, all in all, a very efficient game, but yeah. they corrected a lot of the things that they didn't do well against North Texas. Hey, if you don't take advantage of offensive rebounds, what's the point of grabbing them, right? right? So to go out and get 24 second chance points is huge. 109 points for Boise State in this game, the fourth most of the Leon Rice era. They pick up that uh, free throw shooting percentage a little bit. Maybe they inch that thing up a little bit closer, but overall, I think Boise State has a lot to be happy about walking away from today's game, feeling like they made some significant progress as they now attack the rest of their December schedule with Mountain West Conference play just an arm's reach away. They open up Mountain West play January 5th at San Jose State. And then their home opener in conference play January 9th against the currently undefeated Colorado State Rams. We want to thank you for joining us this afternoon on the Mountain West Network and KTVB. Boise State wins it 109 to 70. For my broadcast partners, Jay Tust and Nick Duncan and all the guys in the truck and the folks running the cameras, Mark Snyder, thanking you for joining us. Come back. We'll see you next week here on the Mountain West Network and KTVB.